Situated on one of the Sunshine Coast's most iconic sites sits a new restaurant steeped in history and honouring the memory of its first owners, Daisy and Samuel Johnson. Daisy and Samuel migrated to Australia from England after the First World War and together built the rustic cabin in the early 1920s. Right from the start, the cabin located halfway between Brisbane and Noosa attracted plenty of business for the locals and provided a convenient stop for weary travellers making their way along the Cobb Co route. Originally, the cabin was located closer to the bridge spanning the Mooloola River, but later was moved down the road opposite the Caloundra turnoff and a second storey was added. In 1927, Sam and Daisy celebrated the birth of their first and only child, a beautiful daughter named Dot, who sadly went on to pass on only 10 years later. During the Second World War, the cabin became a favourite stop for army convoys on their way north. Shortly after, in 1945, Samuel Johnson died, leaving Daisy to carry on the tradition of the cabin with the help of her friends. During Daisy's ownership, the cabin received visits from nobility, including Queen Elizabeth II. And in 1960, when the alignment of the Bruce Highway changed, the cabin was moved again to the location where it sits today, nestled into the beautiful Jawara Scenic Park. Daisy called the log cabin, as she affectionately referred to it, home until she passed on January 27, 1978, at the age of 85. In 1982, the cabin was bought by a local businessman, who in 1992 transformed the cabin into a local restaurant, complete with a tourist information centre. Just a little over 10 years later, the cabin changed ownership once again and was extended to become a fully licensed a la carte restaurant serving lunches and candlelit dinners. After almost 90 years, two different locations and numerous renovations, the rustic cabin had lost its spirit and was in much need of repair and refurbishment. In 2010, local businesswoman Sue Joseph purchased the rustic cabin with hopes of restoring it to its former glory as one of the Sunshine Coast's most recognisable landmarks. Sue is the proud owner of Bassett Barks, one of the largest landscape and media supply facilities in Australia, set on 100 acres in the foothills of the Glasshouse Mountains. Sue has worked at Bassett Barks for 22 years, working her way up to CEO and purchasing her first stake in the company three years ago. Born and raised in Mooloola on the Sunshine Coast, Sue has fond memories of her childhood and times she spent at the cabin. My first recollections of the cabin were driving past on a Sunday going to church and occasionally you would see this lady and only ever a lady that I ever saw and she would be serving people through a kiosk type window at the front of the cabin and I remember twice being able to go there on two occasions and Daisy served us and we got a soda pop to share within um, amongst the children in, in my family. The next thing I remember was I was approximately I, around the 26 years, uh, 26 years of age and I decided to go and work at the cabin uh, for extra money and I remember thinking how much I actually liked Daisy's story and how much I believe that the, the the position, the building, and the history of the building was, was a really special, special thing to me. It was at that point when I thought, if I can ever afford to buy this, I will. Sue purchasing the cabin came as a total surprise to her friends and colleagues. Vivian Didula, Sue's general manager of Bassett Barks, remembers that day clearly. We were away one day and Sue walked in and amazingly announced that she had just bought the Rusty Cabin. So we were all very excited about that. At the same time, we were all very concerned as to, yeah, sure, we could fit that in our schedule now. Um, so that was the beginning of the birth of, um, of the new project. After weeks of planning, the new designs for the cabin were finalised and the transformation began. The team set to work taking apart the cabin, starting with the front. The entrance, which was fully enclosed with screens, had become riddled with mould and mildew over the years and had to be completely taken down and rebuilt.
The iconic logs that originally lined the walls of the cabin had been replaced during one of the many previous renovations, and the imitation logs that were put in their place were taken down. The copper ceiling that had stood since the cabin was built had suffered 20 years of water damage, so extensive that it had to be removed. Every window and door, carpet and floor was removed. And after 12 months of constant renovations, the cabin was stripped to a shell of its former self, a blank canvas awaiting its revival. After standing beside the highway for almost a century, first as the log cabin and then as the rustic cabin, in 2011, the Sunshine Coast's longest running business was reborn as Daisy's Place. Daisy's Place is a modern interpretation of the original log cabin. Its stunning interior design, achieved using a mix of Sue's vision and ideas gathered by traveling the world and locally sourced products, bring this historic landmark into a new era. The design of the cabin is different than it was and, and, and I understand that and I understand that some people would like to see it uh, more rustic, some people would, would have liked to have seen it go back to logs, uh, some people would have liked to have seen it stone, uh, brick, so in the end uh, I still wanted to make sure that there was a lot of timber, a lot of nature, but I had to actually rebuild it so that it would withstand the conditions of the next hundred years. And Daisy's presence will also live on in the new design, with tributes to the legacy of her beloved cabin. So in this area we have some gorgeous pictures, some old and some not so old of Daisy, Daisy's daughter, Daisy's husband, the cabin when it was the rustic cabin when they first built it. Among the photos, a piece that was once central to the operations of the cabin was discovered and restored, which is now proudly on display. And this is the original, the original boiler that uh, Daisy would have used when she was here by herself. It's just been cleaned and preserved and we're going to keep it here so that it's on show. And we'll, there will be a story about it so that everyone knows. The kitchen received a total refurbishment, complete with state-of-the-art cooking facilities and brand new wood fire pizza oven with fresh ingredients only a few metres away. Here is our herb garden for the kitchen and we're actually going to create a, a situation where we, we're going to try and grow as much as we can. It will, we won't be able to grow enough to support the restaurant, but there will be a lot of the touches of this in your food. It's fresh, it's organic and it's, um, Something where kids can come along and they can pick their own little bits and pieces and create you know, some of the things they may like to eat. And so it's going well, it's really gorgeous. And it, it's all loving it. Throughout the restaurant are accents of nature from the stone bar, timber windows, and the logs on the front fence, which pay homage to the building's history. A history that is never far away. Only a hundred meters across the road in the Malula Cemetery lays Daisy and her family, always watching over her beloved cabin. I'm hoping that Daisy would love what we've done. I'm, I'm hoping that Daisy would love the colours. I'm hoping she would love the fact that we've taken the, the outside of the cabin into the inside of the cabin, that we've used as much as of, of the natural timbers and the natural surroundings, and that we've changed the name to Daisy's Place in the hope that uh, Daisy will be remembered and that people will remember her family and know what this amazing woman was. So, yes, I'm hoping that Daisy likes it. <laughs>